Hi, I'm Cameron, the rector of St. John the Divine Anglican Church, serving the sea to sky. I come to you today from the unceded territory of the Squamish Nation. A special welcome today for any of our beloved siblings in Christ visiting from Squamish United Church as Karen takes a well-deserved break this weekend. Uh, wherever you are, however you are, I'm so glad you're here for this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. I hope that this is a time of uh, prayer and rest for you this week. So let us begin by getting ready. Wherever we are, however we are, let us show up to worship. Scattered, we are connected. So if you are comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes and let's take a few deep breaths. Breathe in the love of God. And breathe out fear. Breathe in the love of God. And breathe out anxiety. Breathe in the love of God. And breathe out all those things that are troubling you today. Breathe in the love of God. And keep on breathing until you are breathing out the love of God onto the entire world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God be with you all.
Let us pray. Holy One of Israel, covenant keeper, you gather in what has been rejected, restoring what is lost, and healing what is wounded. Give us faith to speak out boldly so that the outcast may be welcomed and all may be blessed. Amen. Our first reading is from Genesis 45. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So if it was not you who sent me here, but God, he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry up and go to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honoured in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. Well, Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our psalm today is number 133. On page 890 of the Green Book of Alternative Services, or in front of you in the liturgy today. Please read along in the second line of each verse. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now have been disobedient in order that, 
by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then Jesus called the crowds to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet... Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of Christ. We have a number of great readings today. In our first reading from Genesis, we are coming to the end of the Joseph cycle of Andrew Lloyd Webber fame, where everything is finally out in the open, a family drama that ends with Joseph and his brothers reunited on the path of healing and reconciliation. I love how they greet each other with kisses and weeping, tears that I am sure are a mixture of sorrow hurt and regret, but also relief and joy. We have an absolutely delightful psalm today, number 133. How good and pleasant it is 
when brethren live together in unity, the psalmist writes. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the color of his robe. Oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard. What a weird and wonderfully sensory image communicating the great blessing and abundance to be found in our life in unity, in community with one another. And then our second reading, Paul's writing to the followers of Jesus in Rome, continuing to work some things out for all of them. However, I heard that he emphasized above all else the irrevocable nature of God's gifts and calling, proclaiming God's faithfulness and mercy. However, my imagination, my heart has been grabbed as it has been the last few weeks by another incredible story from Matthew's gospel, particularly in the second half. It begins with Jesus leaving that place and going away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And right off the bat, the question that arises is, why did Jesus go there? It doesn't say. This was not in Judea or Galilee. These were Canaanite cities. And was Jesus not the Jewish Messiah for the Jewish people? While he was there, I feel like it should not have shocked anyone that he ran into a Canaanite woman, a Canaanite, a Gentile, meaning not a Jew, someone who was different. This is a big deal. Like on many, if not most, issues, the scriptures and tradition are not of one mind when it comes to the relationship between Jews and Gentiles. There are texts from the Hebrew Bible that are both incredibly expansive and inclusive, like Ruth and Jonah and Isaiah, as well as texts that might be described as xenophobic, like Ezra and Nehemiah. It took years after the crucifixion and resurrection to work out whether Gentiles could belong to this new Jesus movement. According to the book of Acts, it was Paul's advocacy that helped convince the fledgling church that Jesus was for all. This working out of who Jesus was for started during Jesus' own life and ministry. And so we come back to today's gospel reading, one of the most disturbing, difficult, and confusing stories, I think, about Jesus. A Canaanite woman comes to meet him, pleading for the aid of this Jewish miracle worker she has heard about to help her daughter. And Jesus replies, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am not here for you, Jesus seems to say. Yet she persists, kneeling before him as his disciples urge him to send her away. This Canaanite mother does not give up on this Jewish Messiah, however. Lord, please help me, she says. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, Jesus says. Jesus just called this woman a dog. He just called her people dogs, and it was not endearing. This was a slur, a dehumanizing comment. I wonder how that makes you feel. It is what comes out of the mouth that defiles, Jesus says in the first part of this gospel. I wonder where Jesus learned this. Growing up, did he hear this all the time in the marketplace or from his friends and family? I wonder if he had ever thought twice about this, this understanding of Canaanites as lesser, as dogs. I wonder if it was something 
that was just normal, natural, and accepted. God became flesh and dwelt among us, taking on all that that means. Did this mean the prejudices and biases that are systemic, that are taught implicitly, implicitly in every people and culture? Where do we learn our prejudices and biases? Because we can't escape them. When we are raised with them, surrounded by them, it is just normal, natural, and accepted. And for those who are benefiting from these prejudices and biases that are built into our society, forming systems of oppression, it can be difficult to even see. Or maybe part of us doesn't want to see. This is one of the few gospel stories where I would argue the hero is someone other than Jesus. In this story, I think we can look to this unnamed Canaanite woman. God bless her. Thank God that she did not just shut up and go away like it seemed like they wanted her to. I wouldn't be surprised if Jesus felt this way too, saw her as the hero of this story ultimately. After all, he experiences something when challenged, a change, a softening. He clearly pivots from calling her a dog, trying to get rid of her. He ends up praising her. Woman, great is your faith. On top of that, in Luke's gospel, it says that Jesus tells a story, a parable about a widow searching for justice, pleading, persisting with an indifferent, dismissive judge. I feel some spiritual resonance between the widow and this Canaanite woman. Using my imagination, I wonder if the parable was inspired, seeded by just such an encounter. I think we need this story desperately, desperately right now. It speaks powerfully to our current world, particularly the renewed conversation on racial justice in our society. I think this story is so timely because I don't know about you, but for me, it feels like the energy and focus for this work of anti-racism has been dissipating over the past weeks and months. And this provides a reminder for me that this work matters, that it is not over in Canada, in Squamish, in Whistler, in our churches, in ourselves. That we cannot ignore the voices of those who continue to cry out for justice. It might seem like this current conversation about racism, the racism that is baked into our society, is new. However, it is not. Black and Indigenous people, people of color, have been speaking up for years, decades longer, and like the Canaanite woman, have been routinely ignored and dismissed. Like her, dehumanizing slurs have been thrown at them. They have been told to shut up and go away. However, like the Canaanite woman, this mother, they persisted. They have not given up, and thank God for that. If we are to follow Jesus, we need to follow him into this awkward and uncomfortable place, a place where we might find out we are wrong, where we are confronted with our own prejudices and biases and those of our society, where we repent and learn and grow. Where we make mistakes, but have the opportunity to experience that transformation, that conversion of life that will allow us to listen and join in with those voices working for justice and change for our world. Now I come back to that question. Why was Jesus going to Tyre and Sidon? Why was this Jewish Messiah in this Canaanite region? Well, I would like to imagine. I'd like to imagine that there was something that stirred within him, that 
he could not quite place his finger on, but moved him to this place of learning and growth. I would like to imagine that just like the Spirit led him, drove him into the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry, so too the Spirit drove him to face this different sort of temptation, to face it and to become even more fully himself, the image of the invisible God, the creator, lover, and sustainer of all people. I pray that we listen to the voices of those who have persisted. I pray that we follow our Lord and Savior into our own awakening and growth. And I pray that as individuals, church and society, we will be driven by the Spirit into those places where transformation can happen so that the world may grow even more fully into God's dream. Dear friends, I invite you to join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In today's prayers, after I say, Lord, hear us, you may respond with, Lord, graciously hear us. In peace, let us pray to Jesus, our Lord, whoever lives to make intercession for us. Savior of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain. Bring hope even in the darkest night. And we think especially of all who are affected by the explosions in Beirut. All who are involved with the new rules imposed on Hong Kong by China and the many injustices in China. We pray for our own government and for those who are tasked with making difficult decisions. May they be decisions that are true and honorable and respectful of all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of the Church, empowered by your Spirit, all Christian people, especially those clergy and lay people working in our northern diocese, those working on the streets in our cities and towns, those offering hospitality to refugees and all others in our communities. We pray for Archbishop Melissa and for our priest Cameron. We give thanks for all who make the virtual services possible. We continue to pray for all that is involved in opening up our churches for services, for programs and activities to enable us to continue Christian ministry. Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this place we call home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, 
and peace to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those on our hearts this week, and for all who suffer with the COVID virus. We pray for the House Sound Women Shelter, the residents of Hilltop House and Shannon Falls, the elders of Squamish Nation, and patients doctors and nurses at Squamish General Hospital. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. gathering our prayers and praises into one. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. 
Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.